fixed dumbbell versus loadable dumbbell. Don't be caught out. So we're really impressed when you competing recently, Chloe, and you used a, a different technique to most of the other guys. And you, you did you did you panic a little bit? You said that you'd you'd panicked a little bit because you'd gone to find the rack position and then it felt completely alien because you used like a one of the globe style d dumbbells that was mm -hmm. uh, you'd you'd been done most of your training on a loadable dumbbell. Yeah, so I've always used a loadable dumbbell. I haven't really used globe dumbbells before. Um, we had a, a little bit of time to warm up. Um, and when we were warming up, I just couldn't get the dumbbell to sit in my usual rack position. The globes were really, really big, and I just didn't have a mass on me to hold it in place. So it was like, sugar, I'm going to have to change this. How can I change it? What's going to be efficient? Um, so decided last minute in the warm up, I'm going to do it like this, just did a dip and drive. And then when I went out to compete, that's what we went with. Brilliant. So, what have you got? Have you got a theory on that? Like, why did why? So you, you managed. What did you do? Forty two for six. Did you do? Uh, five reps. Uh, five reps. So, um, so you 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 look you look at the the picture that I've, I've, I've attached to this. Um, so you, you you imagine that that rack position with that globe style dumbbell, and you describe did you describe it as like ugly, or you weren't you weren't really happy with it in terms of how it looks? Yeah, like, tell us tell us a bit about that. Like, Gus is gonna have to join us for this. He's... That's fine. That's fine. I might have, Sophie might have to join us actually. She's been yapping <laughs> outside. Yeah. Um. So for me, it was just a quick on the spot, like. Okay, if I try and hold it in my normal rack position, there's a really high probability that it's just going to slide straight off. Um, it's going to slip down and the dip and drive is going to be all over the place. So I knew that if I held it here, it's not that strong a position and it feels much heavier. So when you get a loadable dumbbell here, it feels weightless, right? When it's here, it feels really heavy. But I know my jerk is really strong. I've done 100 kilo behind the neck. So I know my legs are cap more than capable of pushing up 43 kilos. So it just went through my head. Okay, if I can if I can stabilize it here, I know I've got the, the leg power to get it up. Um, and actually it worked quite well because it didn't, it can't go anywhere. It can't, you know how we talked um, on the other episode about with the push press and people having that gap like there's no gap it can't it can't move so it's a pretty stable starting position it's not quite over my center of mass which was a bit of a pain um but with the power and i've done a lot of shoulder stability work over my years of training i knew it would probably work so I took a risk and it paid off <laughs> yeah great so the so in terms of explaining what's going on with this um what what what's what happens with the loadable dumbbells? Like I don't know if you I don't know if you can what 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 weight does your loadable dumbbell start at that you would train with generally? What in terms of position weight? No, what what weight is the loadable dumbbell? The empty oh, dumbbell. Uh, twenty five. Twenty five, right? So yeah. I don't know if you I don't know if you feel this close, but sometimes, <clears throat> like say you go from twenty five, the empty dumbbell. And you might go to like 35 or 40 even. And have you ever noticed that the the rack position might actually feel a little bit yeah. better with a bit of weight in or not? Mm -hmm. have, you ever, have you ever noticed that? Um, so I'm not overly experienced in dumbbell. It's something I've kind of trained on and off and never really had a big long block on. Um, but, I, oh God, I'm so sorry, my dog. It's all right, bring, bring him, it's getting part of it. It's cool. <laughs> he gets bored sitting there. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't think I've noticed it to that extent, but I haven't gone very, very heavy on a dumbbell. So the heaviest I've gone, I think, is like forty. It's 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 marginal, but I I noticed that when, like, say, the empty dumbbell that I, that we have is fifty, right? and mm -hmm. I put it up to like seventy, and I find it a lot easier to kind of stabilize on the right. Like, it just fe it just feels nicer, even yeah. though it's, even though it's a bit heavier. So with a loadable dumbbell, if you think about it, what what's happening as you add weight? Is you're adding weight that's closer to the center. So even the even the the dumbbell seems like a a kind of rectangular, like in terms of mass. Like when you get a loadable dumbbell, you kind of pack in towards the center, if you will. 
Yeah. And then and then the the, the edges are actually because they they're not they're not that heavy. Um, whereas obviously with with say like a globe style or fixed dumbbell, the weight the weight is distributed evenly, kind of like the where, where the center the center of mass is different. Even though they look, might look exactly the same, that the loadable dumbbell and the the kind of globe style fixed dumbbell, or look very, like they might be similar in terms of dimensions. They might be a twelve inch diameter. They might like they, they are going to feel significantly different. Yeah. Because if you 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 imagine where most of that that kind of mass is on a say say a loadable dumbbell, it's gonna be it, it's gonna be a lot lot kind of easier to stabilize than the rack usually. So you've got two options with the globe with the globe dumbbell. You see a lot of people will do um so if you do your normal rack position, say say like this, Chloe, mm -hmm. what you've got with the the dumbbell up here. Uh, sorry, this this bit up here with the globe style, it's pulling you out there because it, there's this big heavy heavy mass on the outside that's that's pulling you down. So the wrap position feel, feels feel, feels a lot more difficult than loadable style. Mm -hmm. So you see what what some people have quite quite a bit of success with, which again this is for, again for people to try is that they'll, they'll make the kind of the wrap position more like that and point. Yeah point the kind of so that so almost you'll have like one globe on top of the other globe okay that makes sense yeah so like, so like that so you'll have like the so if you can imagine so basically what you're doing you're manipulating that center of mass of the object so you're going so you drew this you you line down the center of mass you're bringing it closer to your center line which is going to be easier skill wise does that make sense totally yeah yeah or you can do what chloe did the other day which is Point in the putting the, the them forward so you have like one globe one globe in front of your shoulder the other globe behind your shoulder mm -hmm. yeah um so the 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 advantage is if you can get the globe above the globe the the option one that I, that I suggested before like the advantage is you get this kind of you look at my elbow position here if you can if you can find that right. position which can be tricky if you can find it, you can get this rewarded with the shorter range of motion. Whereas if you go with you, your way, like the, it's um, slightly bigger, slightly bigger, slight, a little, slightly uh, bigger range of motion. That's why a lot of people feel, like get put off by it. And like if you feel like in that position, you know, if you went to strip press, like you, you, you feel like your upper body isn't in a good position to produce force whatsoever. But yeah. going back to what we said in the previous thing with Chloe trusts her dip and drive really well, that she knows that her upper body doesn't need to feel strong in this position here because that's not the thing producing the force. It's mm -hmm. actually about getting the, the dumbbell connected to your, like you say, as close to that center line as possible so you can so you can drive into it and, and give it a jerk. So, yeah, I thought, thought it was ab absolutely brilliant to, to um, think of that on the spot um really good so the so the, the 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 good thing about it is if you only have access to a loadable dumbbell there's no reason you can't give these two options a try like it, it, it obviously you're going to go with your if you're using a loadable dumbbell at comp like you're going to use the technique that feels good for the loadable dumbbell of course mm -hmm. But if you're preparing for a comp that could be like globe style or fixed dumbbell, what I would always say, like we say with everything, is specificity is key. Go and get your hands on the specific comp comp uh, comp equipment. But realistically, a lot of the time, that's not going to be logistically possible. In your case, for your comp, you only got you only entered a few days before, didn't you? Or, or... Yeah, yeah. But and I think with that specificity, <clears throat> um. The point that you mentioned with the weight being distributed further out on a loadable dumbbell, if you were to really want to kind of test that, but you only had access to a loadable dumbbell, you could put some um, light collars inside the dumbbell, then put your weight slightly further out, lock it on that way. So then you're getting used to wider distribution like you would. Some people would do that for silver dollar deadlift to kind of. Yeah. Oh, Chloe, that. that is just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I, I've never thought of that. Oh, Nor have I. So, I just. <laughs> but, uh, that's abso absolutely brilliant, and that and that's a prime example of like what we just explained about like you you imagine say the say I don't know like the big rebel 
the giant dumbbell, say the one that I use or yeah. whatever, and they would look identical. One loaded to the 50 loaded to 70 kilos, but loaded to the center as you know as normally would. Or like you say, put the put the collars in or put a couple of pairs of collars before you add the plates, like and took a picture of both dumbbells, they look exactly the same. Yeah. But you can picture how the weight distribution is going to feel completely different, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um so what a brilliant way. This is why this is why I love doing stuff like this, honestly. We've both um, got to go to the gym and test it now after this. That, that, that's <laughs> it. And you've you've like just from this conversation, that's actually sparked that thing in your head to mm-hmm. come up with that thing that I've never heard of before. Like absolutely brilliant, Chloe. So so yeah, for, from uh, after this, like if you're preparing for a fixed dumbbell or globe dumbbell, like try try the different techniques, try the the globe on top of the globe or try the one globe in front of your shoulder one 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 behind your delt and see how, see how you 